Hello, Mount Holyoke Psychology 201 students. Welcome to your very first pre-work tutorial. This is your lab instructor, Natasha. Today, I will be introducing you to SPSS and showing you some basic functions using SPSS. As I mentioned during your first lab session, SPSS is the statistical package for social sciences, which is a very commonly used statistical package. To, to start today, we're going to open SPSS. To, to do this, we're going to look for the blue circle um, icon with the uppercase sigma and click on that. On this first window that pops up, it's a welcome window, and it has some information, it has some tutorials and different things you can explore on your own time, but for now, we're just going to close out of this window. So as you'll see, this is a pretty familiar um, type of file. It may remind you of Excel. The difference between um, SPSS and Excel, one of the many differences, is that um, there's actually two views that you'll use for um, SPSS. There's a data view which we're in right now, and a variable view. Once we import some data into SPSS, the differences between these two views will make more sense. So let's get started and do that. So on your um, Moodle site, under the Lab 1 Pre-Work tab, um, you'll see that there is an Excel file. So what I'm going to do is just download that file by clicking it. So now I'm going to go back over to SPSS and up to the top ribbon where it says File, down to Open, and then I'm going to go over to data. So automatically what SPSS is going to do is it's going to start looking for SPSS files. But what we just downloaded was not an SPSS file, it was an Excel file. So we have to go down to where it says files of type. Um, and right now where it says SPSS statistics, we're going to change that to Excel. So now here are all of the many um, Excel uh, files that I've downloaded. But we're going to look for the one that says lab one pre-work and open that. A window will pop up with some different um, things pre-populated with checks, things saying things like read variable from first row of data. We're going to leave all of these checked and just hit OK. And now you'll see um, that in the variable view, there's some information here that wasn't here before. Um, these are the different variables from the Excel spreadsheet. Um, and I'm going to click over to data view and explain what this data is. So this is just an example. Let's say a group of bakers wanted to open a cupcake shop in South Hadley. So they pulled a group of Mount Holyoke students to gather some information before they opened up the shop. Um, and you'll see in the data view um, that the variables are represented by columns. And um, each row is what's called an observation. So this um, each row is represents a person and their unique information. So the first row is participant I, number um, one. Um, it's saying this person wanted to, when asked how many cupcakes per week they would buy, they said they would only buy one. Um, when asked for a fair price of a cupcake, they said a dollar. And then um, there's a one under location. Right now, the computer doesn't know what we, what we mean by um, one. So what we have to do is go over to the variable view um, and change uh, the value of what um, the dummy variables one and zero represent. So if we look at the fourth row, this is where the location variable is. We're going to go under the values column and where it says none, we're going to click into that cell. Now you'll see a blue box pop up with three dots in it. Go ahead and click on that and you'll see this value labels box pop up. So what we're going to do is tell the computer what we mean by these ones and zeros. So the people who um, gathered the data, let's say that they wanted um, Blanchard to be represented by the zeros. So we type a zero into the value, and then we type Blanchard into the label and click Add. Then let's say the ones represented Village Commons. So we'd click uh, Add 1 for value, and we'd write um, Village Commons for the label and Add and hit OK. Now you'll see um, that there's some information in this cell, but where this will really make a difference is if we go back over to the data view. Now we'll see um, what the respondents meant um, when they gave their answers. So we'll see whether they meant Village Commons or Blanchard. Um, up on this row with icons, you'll see a, a button that has um, a 1 and a capital A and a purple arrow between them. That's the value labels. Um, button. If you click that, um, it goes between the dummy variables that were enter entered, the ones and zeros, and the labels that we gave them. So that's just something for you to look at. So let's say that um, the, the bakers wanted to know, figure out where would be the best place to open their shop. 
we'd want to look at a frequency for that, right? To see um, whether people more frequently responded the village commons or Blanchard. So to do that, we're going to go up to analyze, down to descriptive statistics, and over to frequencies. Now here we'll be able to bring the variable that we're interested in, in this case location, over to the variables box. Um, there's different things that you can do with these buttons. Right now, for the purpose of this first lab you're going to be doing, we don't need to change anything here. We're just going to hit OK. OK, so now a whole new window pops up. This is called your output window. And on the top is some syntax. Um, and then you'll see that there's two new tables that popped up. Um, this first one, the statistics table, tells us how many people responded to this question. In, case, in this case, all 20 students did answer this question. If any had decided not to answer for whatever reason, um, there would be a different number here than zero. Then the second table tells us um, the frequency of where um, students prefer to go to buy their cupcakes. So in this case, eight um, of the students said that they'd want to go to Blanchard and 12 said they'd want to walk over to the Village Commons. Um, so again, this is a very small sample of Mount Holyoke students. So um, bakers would need to take that into consideration. But given this information, they'd probably want to open their shop um, in the Village Commons, right? Okay, so let's say now they wanted to look to try to figure out an average price um, that people would pay for a cupcake. We can go back over to the data view and um, this time we'd want to look at average, so a mean, right? We'd want to figure out the mean price under where it says fair price for this variable. So we go back to analyze and descriptive statistics, but this time instead of frequencies, we're going to go down to descriptives. And the variable we're interested in is fair price. So we'll move that over. Again, we don't need to do anything with these at this point. We'll just hit OK. You'll see your output window is a running log of everything you've done. So you'll still have these frequencies that you ran on location up here. But now we also have the addition of the descriptives we just ran on the fair price. So this tells us, the end tells us that all 20 people did respond to this question. The minimum amount that they would pay was zero dollars. Someone <laughs> would not want to pay anything for a cupcake. The maximum um, that someone would pay was five dollars. Here's the mean right here. And it says that um, the average price that the students would pay is $1.70. So that's just some information for the bakers to take under consideration when they're deciding how to price their cupcakes. Again, with this very small sample, they might want to do some, some more polling, right? But this is just kind of um, a small sample of information for Mount Holyoke students when they're deciding what to do when they're opening their shop. Okay, so let's say um, you are ready to leave lab and you need to take some information with you, right? Um, you're going to want to save both of these files. There's an output file, um, and when you go to save it, you'll see that the extension is a .spv file. So you're going to want to save this as an output file. You're also going to want to save your data set. These are two separate files. Um, so when you go to save this, you'll see that it's a .sav file. Um, so you want to save both um, the data set and the output set, um, the output window before you leave, um, because it contains different information. Um, and you'll need to find a computer that has SPSS on it to reopen it. You won't be able to do it on your own computer if you don't have SPSS downloaded. Okay, so this is the main information, just a basic, basic overview of SPSS before you get started on your lab, um, the first lab next week. Um, so I wanted to just remind you that SPSS is a very powerful statistical package. We're only going to be utilizing some of the functions um, in this introductory level statistics course. Um, but each week we will learn how to run different analyses. Um, so I look forward to exploring these with you. And until next time, don't be mean, be above average.